All right, this is the tutorial for Chemistry 30, Lesson 5.6.3.5.6, and we're going to be talking about environmental effects of fossil fuels. So, first of all, we want to define a couple things. One is combustion reactions. Uh, complete combustion reactions will generate carbon dioxide, water, and energy. And here you see a general form of a carbon, you know, combustion reaction. You have some type of, of hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water and energy. Okay, now the you know compound, the organic compound involved can be different. You can have methane, which we see shown here, or ethane or butane or propane, you know, all sorts of veins or some gasoline or you know all sorts of things. Um, can combust, but if it's a hydrocarbon combusting with oxygen, you call it combustion reaction. Now, you can have different types of combustion reactions. Uh, an incomplete combustion reaction will generate carbon monoxide. So compare that with this one. Complete combustion produces carbon dioxide and then incomplete carbon monoxide, as well as some carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay, but it's still a hydrocarbon reacting with oxygen to produce you know, these um, products. Now, carbon dioxide is uh, a greenhouse gas. This is sometimes abbreviated GHG. Now, that's a gas in the atmosphere that absorbs and emits radiation within the thermal infrared range. This process is the fundamental cause of the greenhouse effect. The primary greenhouse effect in the Earth's atmosphere, or the primary greenhouse gases rather, are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide, and ozone. Okay, uh, so here you see a little diagram and you've got, you know, heat gathered from the sun and, you know, these certain gases, and really the, the one that's in the, the largest amount and has the biggest effect is water vapor. Okay, anyway, but it is going to cause this retention of heat. Now, to a certain extent, we have to have the greenhouse effect, otherwise the planet would be basically unlivable. But there is a difference between the naturally occurring greenhouse effect and what's referred to as the anthropomorphic greenhouse effect, which is a man-caused effect, okay? And that's, that's the effect that, uh, you know, you hear a lots of, of debates about. Anyway, so the benefits of the greenhouse effect. So if the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere were removed, uh, the average global temperature would reduce to minus 18 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> yeah, that's average. So yeah, you're talking about savage ice age conditions. Under this temperature, life would be pretty much impossible on this earth. So the gases like carbon dioxide, water vapor, methane, and nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons and ozone are generally referred to as greenhouse gases are very essential for life to survive on earth. So we kind of have to understand that part. Uh, we need a certain amount of greenhouse effect, okay? But the anthropomorphic global warming um, caused by humans, okay? So no one, not everybody agrees, you know, that this is occurring or to what degree this is occurring and whether it's bad or good or whatever. But many feel that climate, cyclic climate change fits the observations better than anthropomorphic uh, global warming. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of arguments on both sides of that one, okay? Um, let's just say I, I'm... Uh, not entirely convinced. Anyway, um, Alberta Oil Sands, many environmental groups have criticized oil sand projects as being carbon intensive. So much debate has occurred over clean oil versus dirty oil and ethical oil. And that's it. That's all we're going to talk about today. Um, so, submit a summary. <laughs> 